What's good everyone, my name is Alex and this is my review of the Samsung Galaxy S22 Plus. Now the S22 series was announced roughly 4 months ago as the flagship series from Samsung this year. And I already did my full photographer's review video of the S22 Ultra, so this video is all about the S22 Plus. And at first glance, the S22 and S22 Plus may seem like an iterative update from the S21 series. However, this has given Samsung the chance to further refine and perfect this device. And full disclosure, I purchased this device with my own money in order to test and provide an unbiased review. So if you want to help support my channel, definitely give this video a thumbs up and subscribe. Now spoiler alert, the S22 Plus is the one Android phone that I can recommend to anyone without hesitation. It's bigger than the regular S22, which means bigger display and better battery life. But it's smaller than the S22 Ultra, which gets a bit hard to use with one hand. The S22 Plus is also cheaper than the Ultra, while it has most of the same core components, so it has very similar performance. So really, the S22 Plus is the Goldilocks phone. In other words, it's just right. However, this doesn't mean that the phone is perfect, so let's get into some of the details. Starting off with the build and design, I think Samsung really nailed it with this phone. Of course, it's subjective, but every time I pick up the S22 Plus to use, it just feels so premium and solid. The matte back has a soft touch finish that hides fingerprints fairly well. The camera bump is nicely integrated into the corner, and I think it's one of the more streamlined camera bump designs. But this year, it's a two-piece design, unlike the S21 series, where the camera bump was integrated into the frame itself. And speaking of the frame, the shiny edges create a nice contrast against the matte back, and the only buttons on the phone are on the right hand side. I think the buttons could be moved down slightly because the volume buttons get a bit hard to reach, but that's just nitpicking. Overall, there's nothing cheap feeling about this device at all. It feels extremely premium and just as nice as the S22 Ultra. Moving on to the display, the S22 Plus has a 6.6 inch Full HD Plus 120Hz AMOLED panel. The screen is bright, colorful, and exactly what you expect from Samsung. It gets super bright outdoors even in direct sunlight. The glass on the front is flat which I know a lot of people like, but personally I prefer slightly rounded edges, especially for edge gestures. The bezels are nearly non-existent and symmetrical on all sides. Watching videos or playing games on this phone is a truly immersive experience. Holding the device in your hands feel like you're holding just the screen itself, and I haven't noticed any accidental touches on the edges. However, the resolution on the display could be better. At 2340 by 1080, I can see some aliasing on text if I look closely. But in day-to-day -day use, I'm sure that most people wouldn't really notice at all. The cameras on the S22 Plus are excellent. You have a 0.6x ultrawide, 1x normal, and 3x zoom. So taking a look at some example photos, you can see the unedited JPEG straight out of the device, as well as how they can look with some quick edits. Overall, I'm extremely impressed with this camera system. Most of the shots look true to life. All of the images also look consistent across the three cameras, which is always nice to see. The processing on the S22 series has also gotten a lot better. The colors are more natural and over sharpening doesn't seem to be a huge issue. Moving into some night shots, you can see that some of these images look overly bright. I find myself wanting to lower the exposure overall to get a more natural looking shot. There's also the ability to shoot computational RAW with the Expert RAW app. Here you can see we have a pretty difficult scene to capture. There's some really bright highlights in the middle of the frame with some dark shadows on the lower portion. The default settings were way too bright for this scene. You can see the computational photography at work with the slightly lifted shadows and HDR in the sky. At this next location, I am still using the Expert Raw app and trying to capture a dramatic backlit photo. Again, by default, the exposure was way too bright, so I had to adjust the settings to get a darker image. Looking at the unedited file straight out of the phone, it looks underexposed, but this is exactly how I would have exposed the scene if I was using a regular camera. This way, I won't have blown highlights and the shadows can be easily recovered. The built-in photo editor also has a ton of really useful features, like an object erase tool. This is great for some quick retouching, like removing pimples or blemishes from the skin, or even removing whole objects out of the scene. 
Now let's check out some social media examples. Here you can see I'm using Instagram and it looks just as good as the default camera app. The HDR is working well and the shot looks great with tons of detail. Then I switched over to Snapchat to try and take the same photo to do a side by side. And when reviewing the comparison, both images look very similar, with Snapchat having slightly more saturated colors. You can tell especially in the greens and blues. Switching over to a video test with these two social media apps side by side, you can see the Instagram video has a lot more contrast and looks way over sharpened. The Snapchat footage looks more natural and smoother. So from the social media tests, it looks like the cameras are well integrated. However, it does look like Instagram could still use some more optimization. But regardless, this is a huge step in the right direction because the S22 series joined the Pixel 6 series in camera integration for social media. Lastly, let's check out some video examples. This is the 8K footage, and while it's impressive to be able to shoot 8K from your phone, I don't really see a noticeable difference compared to 4K. So for everyday shooting, 4K is probably your best bet, especially since you get more versatility with the lenses and frame rate options. Even the 1080p footage looks great and the stabilization works well. Overall, I am extremely impressed with the cameras on the S22 Plus. And unless you need that 10x telephoto from the Ultra, I think the cameras here are more than capable. The performance on the S22 Plus is also great. Powered by the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, the phone flies through daily tasks with ease. The OS feels light and snappy. There are a couple of duplicate apps, but nothing like the bloatware from Samsung's past. I'm also happy to report minimal overheating even when using the camera for long periods of time or playing games. Along with great performance, the battery life is also pretty good. I average 5-6 to six hours of screen on time, and that's with pretty heavy use with pretty high brightness. However, it does take a while to charge up, and compared to other phones like from OnePlus, Samsung really needs to step up their charging speed. The rest of the S22 Plus is pretty much what you expect from a flagship device. The ultrasonic fingerprint reader is really quick and snappy. I love how you can unlock the device without needing the screen to be on. The speakers are great as well, and the earpiece speaker gets really loud. So when you're watching a video in landscape mode, the sound coming out of both speakers is nice and balanced. There are no issues with signal strength and phone calls are nice and clear. One UI is Samsung software on top of Android, and just like their hardware, they made some nice refinements this generation. There are some really useful features like the ability to pull down to access hard to reach sections at the top of the screen. And with Samsung apps like GoodLock, you get endless customization options and even more functional features. For Android 12, so far I actually prefer Samsung's One UI compared to Google's skin on the Pixel 6 Pro. So in conclusion, the S22 Plus is probably the best phone for people looking to get an Android flagship device. Is it the best? Of course not. If you want better cameras, maybe consider the S22 Ultra. And if you want a more compact device, definitely look at the regular S22. Regardless, Samsung has the most Apple-like experience for Android, especially if you use other Samsung devices like the watch and tablet. So I'm curious to know what you guys think. Is the S22 series too much of the same from last year, or did you guys actually upgrade? I think if you can wait for a sale or get a good trade-in value, then it's definitely worth it. So that's it for this video. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below, and I'll try to answer them. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.